Hello, I'm Carly Findlay and I am presenting a session on memoir today. It's called Your Story Matters and it's for the City of Melbourne Libraries. Firstly, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Aboriginal people of the Kulin Nation. I'm sitting here in my kitchen on Wurundjeri land today. Um, I am so grateful for Aboriginal people for telling stories for over 60,000 years and now more than ever we have to look to them to learn about survival, to learn about family and to learn about stories. Um, after this session I would love it if you could go to your library online or your bookshop online or when you can visit the stores or the library and borrow or buy some books written by Aboriginal people. You can buy romance novels by or borrow. You can borrow or buy romance novels by Anita Heiss, um, Salt or Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe, The Old Lie and Terra Nullius by Claire G. Coleman, um, Melissa Lukashenko's Too Much Lip and Poetry by Alan Van Nieuwen. Just to name a few, there are so many amazing Aboriginal storytellers out there and I really, really encourage you to seek them out. In today's session, I will be talking about my own memoir, Say Hello, and also the upcoming book, um, Growing Up Disabled in Australia Through Black Ink Books. I'll also be talking about ways to tell your own story. Um, I'll be talking about how writing can empower marginalised people, and I will be giving you suggestions about where to look for a strong writing community, especially online. I want to get some housekeeping out the way now. I will be looking over to my left a little bit because my notes are there for this session and I'll also be dabbing at my eyes a little because they get very runny. And I thank you for your patience with those things. I want to mention the Lord Mayor's Creative Writing Awards. They are currently open for submission now. It's a great opportunity to take this self-isolation period and write. Um, there are four different categories. Participants can win up to $12,000. Entries close on the 3rd of May, so you've got nearly a month. And you can find more details on the City of Melbourne website. Good luck. So, a little bit about me. I am a writer, a speaker, I do training, I deliver training in disability and I also um, am Access and Inclusion Coordinator at Melbourne Fringe. I have been blogging for many years, although I don't blog so much now. I started blogging uh, in 2001, on and off then, and I started a proper blog in 2009 when I was halfway through my Master of Communications at RMIT. Um, that led to some writing for the media, and I've been writing for the media for around 10 years now. I started on a disability website called Divine, and then I moved to some mainstream media. Um, in 2017, I got a book deal with HarperCollins and I wrote a memoir, Say Hello. Sorry, this is my copy. It's a little bit battered um, from taking it on tour with me all last year. Um, I wrote Say Hello and it is a memoir about life with ichthyosis, the rare severe skin condition that I have. It also offers some tips around how to talk to people who look different, um, talking about different models of disability, specifically the social model of disability, which means that um, society is more disabling than the body. And I have some stories in there from um, friends and colleagues who also are disabled or have skin conditions. So you can borrow that from your library if you like. There's an audio book as well. I do know that um, BorrowBox has it. And uh, you can get it online as well if you'd like to buy it. It's called Say Hello. The other thing that I've been working on, the other book that I've been working on is um, Growing Up Disabled in Australia. And this is part of the, I'm just trying to move that out of the way from the selfie light. Um, this is part of the Black Ink Growing Up series. I was asked to write for Growing Up African in Australia, uh, edited by Maxine Beniba clark And when I got asked to write for that, I pitched to my agent, um, Growing Up Disabled in Australia. And we have over 40 um, 
contributors. We had over 366 people who submitted a, um, a chapter for consideration and we, we whittled that down to 44 or so. And the book contains amazing stories. It also has some drawings in it, some illustrations by Sarah Firth and Dion Beasley. Other contributors include Astrid Edwards, Jessica Walton, Carly J. Metcalf, Gail Kennedy and Elle Gibbs and also Jordan Seal John to name a few. There's actually a Paralympian in there as well, Isis Holt, who is still growing up. She's 18. And I am really, really excited for you to read this. This is out in February 2020. It got put back because of the coronavirus. Uh, we wanted a really great launch and we wanted people to come to the launch, um, both the contributors and also the readers. So that will happen in 2021. Look out for it then. There will be an audio book and an ebook, and you can currently pre order on the Black Ink website or make a um, pre reservation at your library, I believe. Um, I've also been in the Me Too anthology, which you may um, may know, um, and I have written for another book that's coming out, I think, later this year, uh, and uh, in Tara Moss's book, Speaking Out. So there's been a, a few places that you can see me on the bookshelves, but also you can find a lot of my work online. Um, even though I've been writing for quite some time, for a nearly, oh, probably nearly, um, professionally nearly a quarter of my life or over a quarter of my life, um, I still feel an imposter syndrome. I still am not really sure if I'm doing it right or, um, or whether I know my grammar <laughs> properly. Um, and so for me, community has been really important. I think for me, community has shown me that um, my ideas are valid and also that I've learnt so much from the community, particularly the disability writers community and also the people of colour community. Um, and I'll be talking about that today. Um, so my first big tip about writing, about any writing, is if you want to be a writer, write show up every day and that doesn't mean you have to write a thousand words every day a lot of writers they do set aside a thousand words every day and write but um, it could be writing a meaningful Facebook post it could be posting something under your Instagram it could be journaling it could be writing 500 words on a prompt um, if you have a, um, a list of prompts every day you can write on that um, it could be writing a shopping list it could be writing creatively it could be writing a diary um, or it can be you know writing policy or, or a serious article but I really believe that if you want to be a writer you have to write I've met so many people who tell me I want to write a book but they don't really like writing so it's about practice and it's about showing up every day I write most days I would say um, be it a Facebook status or a note on my phone um, I also write um, I write on my Instagram. I'm writing a number of articles at the moment and um, and that's really, really great. I, I, uh, last year after Say Hello, the, the publicity tour and um, my you know Writers' Festival commitments were really, really big. Um, I did joke at the end of the year that I wanted a um, break this year and I've got a break. We've all got a break. I hope you're all very safe. Um, but it is really nice, I must say, to be able to have the time to write because I felt like last year... I didn't really write a lot after Say Hello. I wrote probably three meaningful, four meaningful pieces. Um, I wrote one thing which was a bit silly. I wrote a piece on Savage Garden, who I really, really love. Um, they've been my favourite since I was about 14. And I wrote a piece for Affirmation's 20th anniversary. I also wrote a piece for the Melbourne Writers Festival um, that... I then reworked for the Horn Prize and it was shortlisted for the Horn Prize. I think that my piece might be in Growing Up Disabled. It's called In Sickness and in Health and it's about disability and my migration. And I also wrote a uh, eulogy for my friend's funeral. So I really only wrote about three or four meaningful things. Uh, I found it really hard to write after or write properly after my my book. Uh, I felt like I'd written all the words. But now I'm back into the swing of things. I've got some exciting pieces on the go at the moment and um, I hope that you enjoy them. So what's your story? I want you to think about something interesting. I think everyone has got a story. Uh, 
you can write something interesting about your life or you can write something mundane about your life. I really, really like reading memoir that has minutia of the day, of the time. You can write about that. Um, if you've had a really big event that's happened, you can write about that. You don't have to write all of your story all at once. Memoir is a place in time um, and be it a book or a blog post, you don't have to write everything all at once. I would say that I know when some people are starting out and writing their stories, they um, they start from when they were born and then they, you know, write to present day. Um, and and e even if that's on a blog or, or a um, Facebook post or in a, me in a mem memoir, you don't have to spill everything all at once. You can save some things, get, get the reader excited for more for your next blog post or, or, um, or book. Think about why you should tell your story. Will it help you? Will it help you understand your life a bit more? Will it help you um, make amends with people? Or will it help you to um, think about um, why something happened? Or will it help you make, you know, un understand the world a bit better? Um, or will it help others? A lot of my writing, I find um, I get a response to it from particularly parents and other disabled people, and they said that it, it, because of my writing, they feel a certain way, or they've, um, you know, that they feel more comfortable, or they feel more knowledgeable, and that's really great. Um, personally, I think if I've helped just one person, it's achieved something. If I help myself, it's achieved something. Sometimes I'm really upset or I need to lodge a complaint or something and that piece of writing has helped me. So uh, also you can write just for fun. Are you going to write just for fun? Are you going to write to have fun, to be creative, um, to try something new? That can be really great as well. I want you to think about why it's important to tell your story. Um, it can be about passing on knowledge or skills. You can share your experiences. I'm just going to read a bit. I'm sorry. You can know yourself. Writing has really helped me to know myself. When I started writing um, on my blog in, in 2009, I'd sort of only just really come to identify as disabled. I didn't identify as disabled um, all of my life until then because um, I didn't see anyone that looked like me. I didn't see, didn't really understand the social model of disability and I didn't, and, and that is when society is more um, disabling than the body. And it took me to meet other people who were disabled, who had different um, med medical conditions to me, to understand disability. And it took me to write. It took me writing to understand myself and disability. And that really, really helped me. Um, and it really helped me find other people as well. It helped me to find community. Um, the other thing that is really important is learning about other people and issues. I think for me, writing uh, has been about connection and it's reading other people's work, connecting with other writers, thinking, oh my God, I feel like that too. Or they really um, get where I'm coming from or even challenging my thoughts about things. Um, there's been a couple of books I've read lately which are very, um, very different to my own values and my own life, um, yet similar as well. And they've really challenged my own beliefs um, and I've been writing about them and it's been quite fun. It's been hard, but it's been fun. So learn about others, um, challenge your own, your own beliefs and values and um, get to know people. I think that's a really great thing through writing. You really do get to know people because you connect with them. Um, the other thing is important is own voices and own voices was a movement started by Corinne Devis. Um, it was a hashtag movement on Twitter, hashtag own voices. And it's about people from one minority group writing from their own experience rather than someone else who doesn't belong to that minority group writing. So for example, a white person writing black characters can be problematic. It's so important for black people to write and to be heard and to be published. Um, in, in the disability space, I'm not so keen on non-disabled people writing disability because a lot of the narratives can be quite problematic. They can be pitying or they can be inspiration porn, which is a coin 
uh, sorry, a term that Stella Young coined, um, and it means the objectification of disabled people for the benefit of non-disabled people. Um, sometimes disability stories written by non-disabled people can be tragic as well. So that's why own voices are really important so we can get our own perspectives out there and we can get our own voices out there, um, and it's particularly important in the publishing industry. The other thing that it's uh, that writing does and why it's important to tell your story is that sometimes you can get paid. I really, really hope that you get paid for your writing. Not everybody pays or not every place pays for writing, but the media outlet should pay. Organisations that have a budget and, um, you know, make a profit, hopefully they should pay too. That's really, really important to get paid. Um, the, the MEAA, the Media, Entertainment and Arts Alliance, has some really um, useful rates around writing fees, if you like, and also the Australian Society of Authors. So you can check out those websites to see the types of um, fees that you should be paid. The other thing, and I know I've talked a bit about this already, is writing is really great to make connections. Um, most of my writing, as I said, has been online and if it wasn't for social media, I wouldn't have made so many connections. Um, I put my writing out there, people respond, I make friends. It's really, really great. I'm going to be talking about some of the ways that you can make connections later. So you have to reveal everything. So a lot of people um, tell me that they're really scared to start a blog or to write a book because they wonder whether they have to disclose everything. Do they have to disclose every argument they've had or things from their life that they aren't proud of? No, you don't have to uh, disclose everything. You can write what you want to about yourself. Um, I think it's very, very important to get permission if you're writing about other people. Um, as an example, last night I was chatting to a friend on Instagram and they were telling me how they're currently in quarantine and there was um, a police officer with a machine gun outside their door. And even though I didn't identify that person, I checked with them and I said, hey, can I tweet about this? I'm, I'm quite horrified at that. Um, they said, yes, that's fine. And it was okay. So when you write about something, you know, perhaps when you write about a family moment or an argument or even something nice that happens um, with someone else, write about um, and, you, and you choose to write about it, Ask them if you can so they don't get a surprise or they're not hurt um, when they read that. So that's super important. Write what you feel is safe to share. A lot of people tell me that they don't feel that they could disclose their disability, for example, if they started writing about it, that it might harm their job. Write about what you feel safe to share. That's a really fair point. Um, I hope that employers don't discriminate, but sometimes they do and if you want to write but you don't want to you know put your name to it you can write under a pseudonym if you want to and you, or you don't have to include your you know your diagnosis or you don't have to include your photo you can choose how much to share write what makes you happy um i think sometimes uh, writing can be a bit of a chore if it's for work. Um, I know I definitely used to enjoy it more when I was just writing after work um, on my blog for fun and getting that flow. But write what makes you happy. Um, if, if you're finding it too hard, if you're finding a commitment of 500 words a day, for example, too much, then, um, you know, you, you don't have to. You can write 200 words a day or you can change tack and write a different um a different theme. Write what scares you. I think this is really important. Um, as I said, I've been writing and reading a few things that, um, you know, perhaps are very different to my own values. And I'm pretty scared to, to write those, especially to publish those because, um, yeah, I think they're very out of character for me. And, but it scares me a little bit and it's quite, it's quite exhilarating. I think that this has really challenged me. So write what scares you. Think about um, something that you haven't told anyone before and write about that. Maybe you can fictionalise it as well um, if you don't want to um, put your name to it. I've been reading a book at the moment. Uh, I won't say who it is and what it is because I, I know this assumption might be wrong, but there's a book that is uh, that I'm reading, and it's around um, mental health. And I wondered if it is um, it's a it's a fictional book. I wondered if it is part biography. So um, perhaps you can turn your memoir into fiction if you want to do that. If you don't want to uh, reveal everything, 
it's super important to find a space to write you can and and not just a physical space um not just a you know a space in your house um but a really dedicated space to keep your writing so you can write a diary or a journal you can write it in a notebook of course um as a writer i rarely have a pen in my bag now i wrote most things on my phone or my ipad um sometimes on the computer um you can write on your computer or phone i really like having um a device that syncs to another device so that when i um I'm on the go, I can make a note in my phone and then when I come home, it's on my iPad. So I really like that. So see if you can get, um, you know, an app or a device that syncs across all your devices. Um, you can, and, and, an, and a space to hold your work. Um, and if this is public, you can write on a blog. Um, you can set up a blog. It could be through WordPress or Blogger or Squarespace. Um, do some Googling, find out what's worth it for you. It doesn't have to be um, super expensive. But yeah, set up a space for your own work and for a portfolio of your work. You can write on your social media accounts. Um, if you want a public social media account, that's great because then editors might find you or you can contact them and show them your work. Uh, you can have a podcast. You can write content for a podcast or you can write um, something a script for YouTube or you can write a play um, something that is memoir focused it doesn't have to be traditionally um, it doesn't have to be traditionally on a piece of paper or um, you know or in a book um, lots of ways to write memoir and to tell memoir so find a space to write also find a comfy space to write you know at home could it be on your couch could you set up a space in your bedroom um, it could be in the study um, maybe you go to a cafe when cafes are open again or the library um, you can go there and, and write in that space go public this is the thing that's really really helped me sorry I'm just adjusting my light because the lighting has changed a little bit um go public so editors and publishers want to see that you're you're writing they want to see you writing they want to see that you can build an audience and they also want to see that you write consistently and having a space to write like on a blog is a really great way of showing this or if you're writing for the media already you can just put all your um and media posts or clippings on your blog so that an editor can see that. Create public social media platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, podcasts, newsletters. These are all really great ways to ensure that your writing gets out there. Um, they do take a bit of a, a time commitment because it is writing and then promoting on top of writing. And sometimes promote, promoting can um, come hard for some people. But that's really a great way to get noticed and to build community. Um, share your writing. Share your writing on your Facebook or your uh, Twitter. Tell your friends um, start up a little newsletter each week and maybe um, you know on tiny letter for example or Mailchimp and um, send out your writing send out what what you're done um, you know you could even uh, write uh, that could be your writing for the week writing the letter to your um, to your contact list make time to write so set aside 15 minutes to half an hour to write a day it's not too much um, I used to write a lot on the train when I had a big commute, um, I would write on my phone. I've written whole, you know, 800 word articles on my phone sometimes when I've just banged it out um, when I've had such a big idea. Um, you know, you can write lengthy Facebook posts or, or small Facebook posts either and you can turn them into articles. I've done this a number of times actually and um, if I've had an editor that has been friends with me on Facebook or um, has seen my public Facebook, they've sometimes contacted me and said, hey, I really liked your post this morning, can you develop that into an article? So that is a really great way of getting ideas down. Um, you can add a piece of writing to your Instagram post. I know that there's some Instagrammers that I follow who do really beautiful writing in addition to their photos. Michelle underscore Roger is one of those people. Michelle is a disabled woman that lives in Gippsland and she always has some really beautiful evocative writing below her photos. Um, and share only if you wish. You know, I, I talked about sharing and, um, you know, it reaching editors and publishers, but only if you wish. Maybe you just want to write for yourself and maybe that's your goal and, and to read over what you've written at the end of the year. So that that's important too. 
I'm going to talk you through a short writing exercise now. After I've done this, I want you to pause the video and take 15 minutes or so to um, to do this exercise. You'll get a slide uh, a, a slideshow at the end of this as well, so all of these notes will be there. And um, while you're pausing, I will have a drink. So a short writing exercise. Think about a time that you had a meal with someone you love. I know that in this current self-isolation, it can be hard to think back to that. Um, maybe it was when you were a child with your parents or your grandparents teaching you. Maybe it was with a friend recently, just before um, COVID-19 took over. Maybe it's a meal that you cook for yourself out of self-love. I want you to think about that time. Go back, shut your eyes maybe. Think about it before bed even if you want to expand on this. Before you go to sleep, write 300 words about that memory. So I want you to describe the food. What were the expressions on your loved one's faces? What did it smell like? What were the sounds of cooking, eating and laughing? Where was it? Were you somewhere exotic? Were you overseas? Or was it just in the backyard? Was it a barbecue in the backyard? What did it smell like? And what makes you think about that meal today? Do you see something and think about that meal? Or when you go shopping, do you find an ingredient and think, oh, I'm going to make that again at home? Think about that. All of those things. And please write 300 words. So pause this and come back in 15 minutes when your 300 words are done. How did you go? I hope, I hope it was a fun exercise. I really like food writing and I really like um, thinking about good meals that I've had. The session's nearly over, but I want to talk to you now about connection. So for me, as I said, it's been amazing to forge connections with other writers. Um, there are lots and lots of ways to do that. And unfortunately, some writers' festivals have been called off at the moment, but writers' festivals have been a really great way for me to meet other writers, meet readers. Um, before I had books out, uh, I would meet you know people who had read my work online. And now that I have a book out, I meet my readers and I get to talk to them and, and hear what my book has meant to, meant to them. Um, some writers' festivals that you might want to look up and bookmark and save up to go when they're back on are uh, Ride Around the Murray. The Emerging Writers Festival actually is happening in June and it's happening digitally. And so you can see that from anywhere in the world on your computer or phone or iPad. That is super exciting. Um, they are cutting edge in um, digital technology and digital events. So that one is still happening, I know. There's also the National Young Writers Festival, um, Council Run Writers Festivals, I know, the Feminist Writers Festival, and I know that they've got an online space for that, Melbourne Writers Festival, Sydney Writers Festival, Brisbane Writers Festival, um, and a bunch of others. Um, just go and have a look online. I know that Newcastle Writers Festival have just done their digital um, events, and I think that you can go and download them on YouTube. The other thing that you can do is listen to podcasts. This is a really great thing that you can do at the moment or any time, but particularly at the moment, there are so many good writing podcasts out there. Um, some of my favorites are So You Want to Be a Writer, um, The First Time, The Creative Pen and The Garrett. I really, really love The Garrett talking, uh, Astrid Edwards talks with other writers about their writing process. I was recently on The Garrett and that was a really... Um, a really lovely experience. Astrid is in Growing Up Disabled, actually. Um, there's also Better Reading, another podcast that I've been on where Cheryl Arkell talks to writers who have just had books out. Um, Booktopia, Penmanship and Magic Lessons by Elizabeth Gilbert. There's some really useful writing um, techniques and tips and also hearing from writers about their own experiences. Um, I really found the first time podcast great just before I was about to launch my book and also the creative pen. Um, the creative pen really prepared me for marketing my book. It had some really great 
ideas about marketing. Um, although it's about self-publishing, it's all relevant because even if you get a um, book deal with a publisher, you still have to be the number one marketer of your own work. The other thing is connect online. Social media um, is a great way to do this. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Um, you can look up Bookstagram or um, am writing on Twitter and find some really great uh, people and ideas. Uh, I've got a bunch of resources for you. Again, you'll get this in your uh, slide pack. There's some great um, things that are coming out from Express Media. Uh, they've got some ex uh, really great um toolkits and kill your darlings as well um as authors online i wanted to mention this my um my agent danielle binks um is very involved in the love oz ya community and she and a bunch of other um young adult fiction writers have started this oz authors online and it's a regular series of zoom chats on youtube and that's really great um there's also the national uh, sorry the australian Young Writers Facebook group, which you can join, and a bunch of others um, if you want to. I actually run a disabled, deaf, and chronically ill um, writers Facebook group. If you want to look that one up, you're very welcome to join if you identify as any of those. Um, any of those. I'm going to just talk briefly about writing a book, um, given that is what I've just done. Um, again practice writing. I, I don't think a book should be the first thing that you write. Practice, practice, practice. Develop a folio of your work and make it public again so the editors and publishers can find it. They can see that you can write regularly and write to deadlines and write for an audience. And also um, this is a really great way of you showing them, um, a publisher for example, that you have worked with editors as well. Prepare a book proposal. Now, a book proposal is a little bit like writing a grant. Um, it has a, um, or writing a grant application rather, uh, it contains a summary of the book, chapter outlines, who's its audience, three chapters, a little bit about you, so your biography, your work, and your existing audience. Um, and that is a really important document. That is a document that if you find an agent, um, they will um, help pitch it or you can submit your, um, your idea to publishers alone. Sometimes publishers open, um, have a time for submissions. I know that there are a couple of publishers that do it on the last day of the month or um, on the first Monday of the month, or for example. So just sign up to those, to, to various publishers' um, mailing lists and find out when their, their submissions are open. Um, not all publishers take unsolicited manuscripts, so it's really, really helpful to go through an agent. You can find your agent by searching the Australian Liter Literary Agents Association, um, or you don't have to have an agent. I've got an agent, and that's really helped me negotiate things like payment, um, like um, who's going to be in the books, and my tour schedule, for example. Uh, it's really useful. I've got um, just into Damase agents and Danielle Binks um, manages me as a part of that agency. You can pitch your, um, you have to wait. So after you pitch, you have to wait. It takes quite a while. I know that some people get really, um, really antsy about that, but it takes some time. I know for me, it took about, it didn't take that much time um, from have from pitching with my agent um, to getting a book deal, but um, the embargo was a very long time. For my first book, it was um, it, uh, probably two months bef between signing a book deal and being able to tell anyone. And for the second book, for Growing Up Disabled, um, I signed the book deal in July, I think, or August, and I wasn't allowed to tell anyone until December. So that was quite a, quite a while. Um, so waiting is a big part of the publishing um, game. So the other thing is you can self-publish and as I said the Creative Pen pod podcast has a really great um, you know suite of tips to help you self-publish um, if you want to and if you're a blogger you're already self-publishing um, but remember it's a lot of um, money that comes out of your own pocket as well if you do that. Um, you have to write the book, of course. Um, and again, you know, setting aside time every day really, really helps to do that. Um, you'll be on deadline if you're working with a publisher or on self-deadline if you're working for yourself. And the other thing that's really important 
is promoting your book and I know sometimes writers can be real introverts so it can be hard but there's no one else that's going to champion your book like you you've written a book and you should be really proud and you should be talking to people about it so again those podcasts that I mentioned have had they have done really great things in helping people to promote their book so that's a little bit about writing a book I know I've um, talked about it quite quickly and there are a few more steps but um, that gives you the gist of it and, and certainly my experience not everyone has to write a book and that's okay. As I said before, um, you can write memoir in a number of ways. You can write blogs or you can write diaries or news articles. Um, not everyone has to write a book. It's a big commitment and it takes a lot of time and it can be really hard as well. Um, it can have a lot of emotional labour spent on it. So I want you to know that all types of writing matters. You are still a writer if you don't write a book. Memoir can be in many forms, as I said. Podcasting, Instagram, tiny letters, diary. It can be a cookbook. I really like cookbook memoirs with stories about the food beforehand, before the recipes. Um, Another important thing is if you're wanting to get into books um, but you aren't competent to write your own book, um, submit to writing competitions through um, the library, for example, the, um, you know, the Lord Mayor's Creative Writing Competition, as I mentioned before, or you can submit to literary journals. Um, look out for those kinds of competitions. The other thing that you can do is submit to anthologies. Um, lots of careers have started through that lots of writers careers have started through anthologies uh, so you can definitely um, do that I'm going to pop a link as well in the um, in the slides to a presentation that Danielle Binks and I did about um, submitting to anthologies so hopefully you find that useful and don't forget to read. I mean, it's an amazing thing to be able to write but I think that that comes from reading it comes from reading other writers it comes from getting ideas and seeing how other writers um, you know both write their craft and also how they promote their books and how they promote their work so read um, the library is an amazing resource um, online or through borrow box and um, or um, support your local bookstore if you're able to reading is so important I would probably at the moment um, because I've got the time I'm probably reading three books a week and it's been amazing just to expand my views and my thinking. Lastly, I want to tell you where you can find me. You can find me online, carlyfindlay.com.au. I don't blog so much anymore, but sometimes I do a blog um, when I have something to say. Um, mostly I'm on Facebook. You can find me, Carly Findlay OAM, on Facebook. Or you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Carly Findlay. Um, again, I've written Say Hello, which is in your library or at the bookshop and on audiobook as well. And this book, Growing Up Disabled in Australia, will be out in February. It's been so lovely to talk to you today. I really hope that you find this valuable and do get in touch and let me know if you've written something since you've watched this. Thank you and keep safe.